welcome to my little session about some plugin I make. And I have to say, I'm very happy to, well, have this job <laughs> for uh, 15 years now. I'm uh, just coding, uh, making examples, uh, helping people. And uh, because you all regularly buy a license, uh, I don't need to well, worry about it. So I can help people without billing them, actually. <laughs> Um, I hope you all watched the video I made because I thought I may not repeat that. So there is uh, uh, now ah, uh, videos there. Well, the one about the FileMaker plugin. And uh, oh, it will soon rain also. So um, I have a lot of stuff prepared over the last uh, months. One thing you may have noticed is that our Mac plugin uh, grew a lot. So it's now over 50 megabytes. I hope you don't care. Uh, if you like to know why, well, there's a little secret. Uh, there's some code for Apple Silicon already. So uh, do you have any questions about the plugin? Uh, or do you, do you just want me to show you a few things? Christian, does that mean that it's uh, optimized uh, for the EM1 uh, already? Yes, of course. Cool. I mean, I, I don't know when FileMaker will, but, uh, when Claris will ship something with M1 support, but I worked for it uh, a couple of months and it took a while to get all the libraries uh, compiled for it. And then make sure it, it links and maybe starts. So let's see. Let me just take a picture. This is always a nice function. I'm not sure if you know that, but um, you can take pictures or scan a document with uh, your iPhone from your Mac. So let's just say import. And I take a picture of you guys. And now I can take a picture with my iPhone and uh, get it on my Mac, insert it in the container. And let you just show how it works. We initialize by defining a script trigger. And then when we want to import something, we can just call our plugin function to import and get a script triggered where we just ask for the picture and put it in the container. Well, you guys have anything you want to see, especially? Otherwise, I will just show you another example, maybe. For example, have you seen the, the live style text rendering with Dyna PDF? No, I haven't. That sounds good. So we, we got this code uh, to convert from, um, from FileMaker's definition, definition of style text to what Dyna PDF needs. And then we are doing a rendering of the PDF page we created in memory and show it to you. Um, this is very quick. So we can just type here and you see the letters are coming in. And I can use all the, all the different formats from uh, oops, FileMaker. So let's say, uh, take a different font. You see the font is changing there. And So to do that, we have uh, a function white style text, where you just pass in the alignment, uh, the style text, and you can have a leading factor uh, to define how uh, the difference between the, uh, the distance between two lines is. So I can just change this to maybe 1.3, run the script again, and you see we have a little bit more spacing. Yeah, and 
Well, the, the conversion is very nice because wherever you need some text drawn with standard PDF, you can now use the styles. And this example shows you the intermediate. This is the style text with the commands for Dyna PDF. So here, use font zero, use font size 18, use a certain color here. So this is automatically translated in this example for you. So you don't have to do it yourself. Then uh, another thing I wanted to show you is um, well, we need more script. Um, I'll just make a new script. Uh, so, oh no, I have one. So, if you are in script workspace, uh, you can click here to go in the window from FileMaker and press the specify and then change the calculation. But if you press the option key on a Mac, you can now jump right away into it. That's something I made. Uh, a few weeks ago, and it also works for set field. And I think this is a very nice trick to directly jump into the calculation window. And while you are in a calculation window, you can also just check the syntax with the plugin or execute the command and yeah, the variable is not defined. But if you have anything here, you can just execute it very handy. Let me know if you need anything special for this. Um, like if you if you have a lot of text, uh, I already, uh, let's make a little bit more text. Uh, I, I made this scrollable already. So if you have a lot of text, you can scroll. And if you have a syntax error, uh, we show you an error message, uh, which is from a list. So it doesn't, doesn't help you much, but it may tell you what kind of error you have. And I'm sorry, I can't tell you where the error is. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So please unmute yourself if you have a question or why do I have a question? Shirt? I don't have a question, I have a wish. Uh, is it possible to get a lint, a lint, linting function in there, a formatting function, auto format? For, for the calculation? Yeah. It's like, if we could get a linting function into there so that you don't need to think about formatting anymore. Yeah, let me, let me just say, uh, you define the function, um, you define the expression to evaluate, and I will just make a button for you. Like you get the, I, I pass ah, you. Ah, okay, uh, okay. You make an expression for me and I just uh, run it and. Uh, uh, yeah, okay, okay. Uh, the, the expression is MBS. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't format have. Format calculation, yeah? Yeah, I don't have a parser uh, <laughs> for, for FileMaker calculations, uh, but uh, I could allow you to also provide it as JavaScript if, if that helps you because we, we got a little JavaScript engine, which I can also show you because people love JavaScript recently mm -hmm. much more. Um, so let's go through the examples and you can just run some JavaScript and get a result back. And because this is using our um, built-in uh, JavaScript engine, it can run without, uh, without a web viewer and can run on the server. And you can define your own global properties. Uh, you can define um, your uh, own custom functions for JavaScript, as well as you can define a function to evaluate or run script or do a SQL in FileMaker, if you want that. And because you can define it with your own name, um, uh, you may use your own secret name and at least uh, have not everyone know what your function is. Um, Christian, can I ask you something about the, the, the formatting? Uh, it, I don't know if it's only me, but I have it on several machines. Uh, when I'm entering a formula, then you have this nice colorizing, and yeah. then you, you put an extra return in the middle, 
And then all of a sudden, the whole thing uh, goes in another color. And then you, you continue typing, and then all of a sudden, it's again well, well colored. And so it's like it's in the middle of the calc, like, yes, like this. Yeah. Is this normal? Is this supposed to be like that? This is strange. This is, uh, it looks like a bug. <laughs> It's it's been around for a long time, and I'm, I'm I was just wondering maybe it's intentional, but it's not intentional. No, 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 it's not intentional. Uh, it's more likely that the MBS plugin changes the format of here the first character. Then you press the turn, something runs, and the first character defines the role. Um, right. No, you see, it's black now. Um, yeah. It seems like uh, FileMaker will just replace the text here and uh, take whatever the first character has as a style. And the plugin is not triggered to do the formatting again, uh, like yeah. now there's another key. I, I, love, I love the formatting, but um, maybe it's just a small suggestion or feature request, you could call it. When I'm debugging and I have a lot of windows in FileMaker open, I, sometimes I have a lot of scripts open in the, in the script editor. Sometimes I have different script editors open, even because there's different files. Yeah. And then I run a script and then the script debugger goes open again with, with, with uh, uh, colorizing the whole thing. And what I notice is that it becomes very heavy on the colorizing. Uh, and, it's, and it's like, if you go through the debugger and step-by-step step, it becomes very slow going through the steps because it's, it has to refresh those lists, even the ones in the back, it has to refresh uh, no, them. Um, the, the latest plugin has an optimization that we don't colorize script workspaces in the background. Cool. Uh, that's that's something people complained about if they have several open, um, maybe only, maybe, uh, <laughs> so, so the code checks if, if the script workspace is in as a, as a front window. Very cool, mm -hmm. that's what I needed. Uh, it may lead into if FileMaker reloads a script workspace in the background, the plugin may not apply the colors because it's the background, so it may show you different colors. Okay, but it's it's okay as long as the debugging works fast. That's that's good. Yeah, uh, let me know if something else is uh, wrong or missing. Um, sometimes FileMaker has a little bit uh, difficulties to render all the script lines, like if you. If the plugin looks for the, the matching here, uh, if line, uh, we scan up to, by default, up to 500 lines. And uh, FileMaker then has to actually render all those lines into, into here lines for the list. Uh, because right. the list is only loading on demand. Usually FileMaker only renders the first here visible lines, uh, first 30 lines. And uh, if you scroll down, it will render more lines into actual controls. And if we scan forward or backwards, FileMaker is asked to render hundreds of lines and that can be a slowdown. But once it's done, it should stay in memory. And so it, it should just be the first time you click on something. Yep. And if, if the limit is too small for you, um, you can go to the uh, plugin uh, functions. And you may have seen our syntax coloring functions, and we have one here for uh, limits. Let me just look for the image. So here, um, so by default, 500 lines, and we, we don't do any uh, variable check for over 2,000 lines. That's, mm -hmm. uh, I, it, but if you have a, uh, a script with 2,000 lines, you have a problem, um, I would say, but um, some people prefer to have it that way. <laughs> I mean, if you have such a big script, you probably have a couple of if, then, or the leg like case uh, things uh, where you could just make every case it's on some. Um, You're a bad programmer now. <laughs> yeah. Um, so with the uh, execute uh, JavaScript here, we can use uh, global variables you said, like uh, make some get functions available. We can define our own concat custom function. Um, we evaluate here some expressions from uh, FileMaker. We can start a script, oops, it works here. Yeah. We can uh, get some SQL result. Um, um, there's another one with a 
Parameter. We can do uh, text operations in JavaScript, which may sometimes be faster than doing them in FileMaker directly. We can define our own um, functions just in the source code like this, where we work on an array and in this case, remove one value. We can have functions defined, which execute automatically when the JavaScript is evaluated like this. It's defining a function here and directly making a function call. So this is, uh, if you just place this in, in, in some JavaScript file, it will run automatically. This is another function to define here, which uses a random function to make, well, a random password. Then we have uh, here an is array function, which shows you how you can use the prototypes uh, of, um, of an object uh, to, to define uh, the, the type with runtime inspection and see if it's an array. And then uh, we re recently got the model support. So you can define a model model search function, which is called if you need a, a certain model. And then you can return whatever JavaScript code defines the model. And you can use here some global properties if you like. So you can take some hundred case of um, thousands of lines of JavaScript code from a field, put them in a global property, have this function return the one uh, based on the name. And then at any time later, you can just require the model to load it. Uh, in this example, we just hard coded two models. Um, then we show you here how to define your own uh, function for, for the array class uh, named includes. Um, this function can then be used uh, just like any other function. So if something is missing in the, Java, in the JavaScript, language, you can just edit yourself. Um, that's it. Christian, what is, what is duct tape? Uh, duct tape is an open source engine, and that's the thing we use for our JavaScript engine. Duct tape, org, I think. Oh, yeah. So this is a portable oh. JavaScript engine which is very portable. So I can build it for all my plugin targets and also quite small in memory usage and in the... And if you that. initialize, I see it's, a, it's like a function to load it. And as soon as you load it, then you can use all those extra functions then. What? In this case here? Um, well, duct tape in general. Yeah, it's, it's just a JavaScript in, uh, engine. We can uh, be included in the plugin. We can uh, use it um, for anything. And I currently only expose it to you to use it in your projects, but I could, I could also use it internally for plugin features <laughs> if I need, but we'll see. Okay. And uh, this can run without a browser, which is of course uh, different than other things. So let's take an example like here we have some function to calculate the distance between two um, places on Earth defined by latitude and longitude. Uh, let's see. Um, this is calling the distance function. So we have to. So the function is defined in JavaScript. And instead of translating this in a custom function for FileMaker, we just took the, the JavaScript and put it in, uh, well, in the example here to run it with, with our plugin. Um, you may not do that uh, yourself with, uh, with any JavaScript. It, it depends on, of course, on what JavaScript you have, but we had um, a client who had to use a web service with a checksum. And for that, it was very handy to just wrap the JavaScript function and get the exactly same result 
because if you would do calculations in uh, FileMaker, you may have different rounding errors uh, on your mass operations or different behaviors on, on some text operations. So doing it in JavaScript uh, makes sure that you get the right result. And here's another example, which does um, text processing in, in JavaScript um, with, uh, with both FileMaker calculations and uh, uh, JavaScript. So, and I have my phone number example here, which I think is also quite nice. So in this, field here is something like 200k of JavaScript code. Um, and we can just initialize a JavaScript engine and pass in all this library code with evaluate function and then it's initialized. And we can just evaluate uh, function calls to the library, for example, here to uh, format our phone number. And this tells you how the phone number should look like independent of what the user is entering. And then we have functions to get the type of the number, an example functions and uh, validate uh, a phone number. Uh, here, give you different, um, yeah, different styles of phone numbers. And by just embedding a huge JavaScript library, we, we can save us a lot of work and just benefit from the existing framework. Any more questions? Do we have, uh, hi, Christian. Do we have some example to deal with uh, Microsoft Word or Excel files that you can share with us if you do that with the plugin? Yeah, we have that. So let's let's show you uh, some word example. Let me just run it. So this is the input word file. See, I have a template. Um, let's open the template. So this is open in pages, but it, you see we have here placeholders. The placeholders get replaced with the text, and that's usually what people want to do. Mm -hmm. uh, we also can. Uh, use tables where for one client I made this nice function where you can just duplicate table rows and um, this way you can make as many rows as you need and then also replace the text in the in the rows yeah and fill a table in general I would highly recommend to do your um, assembling of the text in the file maker so you have it in records and then output a PDF if possible but also uh, this example here does uh, a placing of a picture. So this, this document contains a picture. Let's see, for the example, it's just a, it's a red picture replaced with a blue one. <laughs> uh, but we originally made it for a customer who has some company selling, image, uh, selling um, houses. And so they have a template for the flyer with some dummy pictures, and then we put the real houses in there. Yeah. Christian, there was this session yesterday about custom functions are dead. And then the speaker was uh, like proposing a, a system of evaluated uh, stuff. Um, I have the impression when you're talking about JavaScript stuff that you are able to make an alternative custom function library as well, this way. Yes, please, uh, yes, yes, yeah, please, yes, can, please, yes, please. Yes, you can just uh, have a database with custom functions definitions you like, uh, with expressions. Um, you can use this little example database to do the error checking here. Uh, let's say plus E to error check, you get this error number and then you can look up that 102 yeah, is that's, that's, field. That's just, that's just file maker, but I mean in the context of JavaScript as an engine. Yeah, what I understand, Peter, is that instead of uh, using the method we saw last day, 
you can write your custom functions, not in a FileMaker custom functions, but in JavaScript and put it mm. inside yeah. the uh, functions so of the MBS. But what's missing then? What is, is it? What would not be, be possible if you write them in JavaScript and let your plugin run the JavaScript and create mm. custom functions in that way? Yes. Yeah, you could have a central custom function like Philip had yesterday. Mm -hmm. You would uh, run the, the JavaScript function. Like, um, let's say you have, uh, let's go back to the JavaScript example. So you would initialize your JavaScript environment. You would maybe do a loop over your table with all your JavaScript function definitions. And then you could use add function to add them here as uh, um, functions. And is it possible Is it possible to run our custom functions in FileMaker from within this script engine? Yes, of course. You can use the evaluate function to, again, trigger okay. any FileMaker function. And you could have. Uh, so once you have defined all your JavaScript custom functions, you could then just call them by evaluating uh, your, your concat here. And because you uh, may have a JavaScript environment in a global variable, um, you could just at any point uh, say here, I'm going to evaluate. Uh, oh. <coughs> oh, I can just use. Other quotes and dollar dollar gs and you would evaluate it. You could of course put this again in, in a custom function to uh, to manage the JavaScript environment for you. Wow! You could build something on top of it, like would you could be, make a custom I, function. Uh, let's. Uh, I could just define one. Let's say. Here, go custom functions and say here, um, uh, let's just call it JS and we make the parameter is, is a call and uh, this would do uh, something like this. Oh, I can execute it, oh, check. Oh yeah, here, uh, let's, let's just define a, a test case, one plus two. Uh, well, this is already a string, so execute three. So I could already test it here. And uh, now at every, any point in um, data viewer, I could just say, uh, we use GS and say concat uh, one, one, two. And well, this will call our concat function, which itself will, will do the work. Um, could also say here uh, fm eval um, get oh let's see um, no oh that's a JavaScript I can use the single quotes and here account name and could call back to farming. <laughs> so. Would it would it be an, another 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 request? Would it be possible to make a funk put a func dot def and a func dot run, um, in which you then say um, that's my function code, and either it's JavaScript or it's FileMaker. Basically, you basically define a function, and you can say it's you know it's it's a FileMaker evaluation text or it's a JavaScript uh, text. Give it a name, and then these functions available from any file. Because then we could like define our own custom functions in the in the MBS plugin, and they're then available to all files. And then we don't have to mess around syncing between uh, between the files. We just define it in our startup script. We define all of our uh, functions that we need to use across the uh, across the database, yeah. and uh, then we just do function dot run and the name of the function we want to run and use. And that's the that's the thing that's great about the MBS plugin. You can have an, uh, as many parameters as you want after that. So having defined your Let's look. your parameter name, you can have, you know. So technically, I instead of using dollar dollar JS, I could of course allow you to define a name, a, clo uh, 
use a different identifier as a, as a variable name. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we have done that before. So you could just refer anywhere with just our, our so, but you don't like uh, J, what is it? JS evaluate. Um, so, uh, so instead of this, I could make it easier for you and you could just pass in uh, an identifier and we could define that this is uh, referencing um, your, your instance. So at any point somewhere in your script, you can just refer to the global JavaScript instance you initialized on startup with all your custom functions. So you need it only defined in one file and then you can use it everywhere you like. And if you prefer something like our JS function uh, we just created, you can do that too. So. Christian, Hi. expanding on uh, Russell's idea, could we use object oriented uh, programming using the, the same technique. So instead of uh, using uh, JSON object notation, we could uh, use the C, I think it's C under, under the hood, right? For the plugins. Can we use object oriented programming if uh, something like that would be implemented? Well, you can already use object oriented stuff in, in JavaScript. Do we have it? But is it using it as an object or is it using it as a, uh, as a stringify, for example? Oh, um, well, is it really result, an object? The result here is returned as JSON usually, except if you use uh, the two string one, which will then uh, use two string in, in JavaScript to get it back as text. But usually you should not return objects from, from JavaScript back. You just keep them in, in a variable. Um, okay, thank you. So let's see, uh, I can just say here something like, so I get, it's an object, V is an object. So I could say, uh, v, let's, let's try this. Uh, I have no idea if it will work, but. So I can just uh, assign something or right. um, this thing, uh, no, this is, oh, this is also an object. Um, but you could use objects in your JavaScript code, of course. Christian, if yeah. you, you would, you're using the same uh, reference to the JavaScript objects, uh, you're reusing it. Does it mean that you can retain some information in the JavaScript environment and use that, reuse that between subsequent calls? Yeah, uh, sure, yeah. Okay. We, one, two, three, and now uh, clear it, and we, one, two, three. This example uses one global JavaScript environment, so it retains the variables. Okay. And let me see, I have this blog post. Um, see, now this is the introduction. Um, we had a blog post about some tips and tricks. Um, uh, let me go on the blog. Um, JavaScript, Globals. Okay, so here it is. So we can get a list of all the globals defined. What's it? Unterminated statement. Oh wow. Oh yeah, I'm different. So this is a list of global variables we have now defined. So you see there's a, it's our file name and our concat function. And I can just get the concat on it will tell me that it's a function with some code. But you can you can put global stuff in in your JavaScript environment, and it will be a variable managed using the plugin, like our variable functions. <laughs> I mean, we have that also. So. Like we have this feature for the dictionaries. Um, where is it? Create. Uh, yeah. Where we allow you to create a dictionary. Uh, 
Oh, create named. Yeah. So here you can define a name, and uh, then you have a global dictionary and a, a sort of name where you can stuff something you like. And because uh, the reference is is defined by you, uh, it's a global one, and you know what's the name of it, so you can refer to it anywhere in your in your files, and you don't need to have to care about uh, what the actually uh, internal number would be. So let me just put something in. Um, yeah, set value for key. So it's. It's like a variable, but then it's an array. This is like you have a separate uh, bucket for, for some uh, keys and values. Just put some number inside. And, and then I can just use list. Oh, I get this. OK, yeah, but keys. Oh, I can just say to, to JSON. So you see it's, it's stored. And because this thing is now not named by number, but by, by a text you define, you can just refer to it anywhere in your code and uh, by the name. Yeah. And I may do the same for the JavaScript engine later. So you could have a JavaScript engine with a global name. Uh, so you don't need to remember the number and you don't need this global variable to, to refer to it. Yeah. And the memory is freed when you quit FileMaker. So. Christian, somebody in the uh, the people here said something about, oh, the advantage would be that I can pass an unlimited number of parameters. And that got me like my ears went like, oh, well, what you, um, can that person? I don't know who it was. Uh, uh, you can, of course, have your JavaScript functions uh, take as many parameters as you like, yeah. You mean like, how, how, how would that work? You mean like a JSON array or? Or I, I didn't get it exactly what. No, we had this uh, concat function, you know. Yeah. And uh, do I mean I can I can just add as much much as I want. I mean the function doesn't use the parameters. Of course. Um, yeah. But okay. you can have as many as you want there. Yeah. And okay. I get it. In this case, the uh, uh, function is written that the result is uh, adjacent, but you could also have it. Uh, Define your function with two string and uh, yeah. yeah, get it back as a text. Yeah. So, did we have some questions? No. Um, so uh, I may put on my 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 list so I can make you a JSON dot new with optional uh, name identifier. I can make you that. Um, so what else do we have? Um, oh, I also already started on new functions. Like I can now do scanning with barcode with the set bar library. If you like, I can show you that. So we have here barcode detection. So the set bar library is, um, we do have it. Oh, set bar. Uh, what is it, DMG? Yeah. So the set bar library is uh, a GPL library, so I can't include it in the plugin, but I got a few copies of the library for you. So you can use it in FileMaker. And we can now uh, load it. Oh, yeah, you have to know the path where, where the file is. So let's see. But I got it working for, for Mac, Windows, and Linux. Okay, loaded. Okay, set by detect and sing detect. So you can either use our, our sing library, which we have been using for years, but well, it got a little bit outdated. And yeah, set bar does a few more barcodes, but uh, think not all. 
So for some things uh, like this one is not recognized by SETPA for some reason, I don't know. Um, but on the other side, we have this barcodes which can be recognized by SETPA, but not by SING. So this offering you both libraries, uh, you could use both. <laughs> the one as a fallback for the other. Yeah. Um, Christian, can I ask you a question about uh, best practices when you are using a server with people and you have like the MBS plugin that you want to regularly update, push automatically when people start up uh, and on server level, um, what would be the best way to do that? I have the impression that some, some time ago uh, when I made that code, um, at the end of the update, I always uh, ask people like, can you quit FileMaker and start it up again? Is that still a thing? Yeah. Um, that's still a thing. Okay. Uh, on the FileMaker server uh, site, um, updating using a server site script, um, what will happen? Uh, I mean, um, does the FileMaker server have to restart when you're going to update? Uh, your plugins using on the server? Uh, if you update the plugin for the server script engine, yes. you have to restart the script engine to load the new plugin, yeah. Right, okay. Actually, FileMaker should do that, and that's because that's the reason we have the script here checking if the version it gets from the plugin is now the version it wants to have. So is it the new plugin already or not? And we have seen trouble uh, with... Um, FileMaker not uh, unloading the plugin correctly. So when the unload doesn't work properly, the load of the new plugin uh, will basically give you the old one because the file paths are the same. Right. And that's the reason for Linux. I, I switched long ago to put in the build number <laughs> in the file name, because if you have a new file name, you get the new plugin. Right. Okay. You could also do that for, for MBS and just rename them as needed and, and just give them a number. Um, and that would prevent the problem with uh, FileMaker loading uh, the new plugin, but getting uh, the old one from the file system cache. Uh, right. But, but, but will that remove the old plugin? No, but you can manually remove Actually, FileMaker should remove the old plugin. And we have seen people where this fails for I don't know why. <laughs> um, so a couple of customers uh, changed the script to also uh, use the plugin function to delete the plugin, uh, the old one. <laughs> um, this can be tricky. MBS Kamikaze, yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, uh, we have a few functions to help you like uh, plugin, Plugin.pass is there here. Plugin pass gives you the pass to the plugin file. And um, then you can, for example, uh, uh, check some things, or you can actually use our move to trash function to move a file to the trash, or, or just use files delete to remove it. That would be really like suicide. Yeah, even more suicide if you want. Uh, we have this app exit function to use a script on the server scripting engine to quit the server scripting engine. Wow, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, well, um, you know, if other scripts are running at the same time, <laughs> you will interrupt those. Um, yeah, but you know, mostly I have that under control. Um, yeah, so you could. You can, if you want to make a plugin update, you may want to, nobody is using the server. And then you can also just use our shell functions. Uh, where is it? Shell uh, execute and uh, so you would FMS be, admin. So you would be able to restart. Like the, here, you can run FMS admin to restart uh, the script engine. So that's better than the, than the kill, than the app kill. Well, uh, 
That's better than restarting. The thing is, uh, if you use FSM admin, it will ask the script engine to restart itself. And then uh, the script engine has the proper way to stop all actions and flush the cache and... Uh, yes, yes, but yeah, with the mind... Exit is, uh, I'm not sure if, uh, how far Clarice implemented it, whether they uh, have an exit handler to do any cache flushing uh, themselves. Um, but we got, got functions like that. Uh, cool, something to experiment with. Yeah, so uh, we have the barcode scanning is new. Uh, there's a play system sound function recently added. And here for, for Peter, here the get column one and uh, the map entries. Um, and that's it. And we got some new RTF to text functions. Like in the recent uh, recent version, I improved that. Let's see, this is new um, because I got some code to translate RTF to style text, and I can now use that for uh, things in FileMaker. And this allows me, for example, to implement a few nice functions for you, like uh, when you use our clipboard functions. For example, you can now get style text from the clipboard into FileMaker on Windows because I got this RTF parser. Yeah. Uh, I, I showed you the shell execute. Uh, there's something I, I can note that we can now use PowerShell scripts. Uh, in FileMaker with our plugin. Here's an example, um, which of course needs Windows, but you can just run PowerShell exa and pass in uh, a command directly with, I think, minus C, or you can pass in a file to a file for a script. So you can use PowerShell in, in FileMaker for doing things. And sometimes for some administrative things on Windows, it may be easier to just write a script with three lines to do the job and then run it from, from FileMaker. Yeah. We still have 10 minutes. Your questions, please. Oh, I can show the RTF thing. So we can... We can go from this to RTF and back to this. Uh, we can also convert this to HTML in our own way. And here we have the styles example. If you want to use JSON functions for style editing in uh, in uh, FileMaker, you can get style text translated by our plugin into a JSON array with all the attributes, and then turn that back into style text. So you can intermediately uh, uh, change the JavaScript and you know, the JSON with some JSON functions or some JavaScript to work on style text in, in FileMaker. Oh, and you see here our uh, coloring for JavaScript in action. So. Oh, Christian, I have a difficult request for a plugin function because the current spell checking module is uh, 20 years old and it stops after adding 2,100 custom words. So it becomes useless and the guy from Paris had said oh, they don't work together anymore with the provider of the spelling checking. Can you do something in that field? Uh, yes, uh, we have uh, our own text view control for Mac and Windows. Um, there we can enable spell checking. And why is it not spelling? Oh, it's suggesting already, but oh, my red line. Oh, they're done. Okay, they're coming. 
So we can define a plugin control text view on top of your layout, which allows you to, uh, let's remove it. So this is just a placeholder control. And when we run the script to initialize it, it creates a new view there. And this view can use the uh, st spell checking from the operation system. Wow. Um, yeah, uh, it can be. Uh, is that, is that cross-platform, uh, Christian, or is it uh, because text view seems like Coco? Uh, yes, but I I spent quite a few times with some uh, APIs from Microsoft, so uh, this is oh, mostly okay. available on Windows too. Uh, not all the functions, but we recently got uh, here the, the style text functions, so you can. Now with uh, 11.3, you can even put style text inside oh. and outside. Um, and you can oh, have, wow. So this is the solution I made for, for a client. Uh, it's of course some work because um, you have your text in a, in a file maker field and when you want to edit it, you, you create the text view for it, but you may put that on a card window maybe. So, uh, the user can open the, the field in a card window to do the a text edit with, with styles uh, and, and spell checking. And then you can have a save button, which, which takes the text back to, to your FileMaker field. And you can also save the RTF and uh, preserve even more styles than we can do. Like even do styles which are not supported by, uh, by uh, yeah. So, I mean, you probably know a few styles which are not supported by, uh, by FileMaker. Let's see, what do we have? We have double lines, let's... Um, I think a double, um, a double strike through is, is not supported. Yeah, I, I can do here all the options that uh, that Apple allows you here. In this case, I can also on Windows get the phone panel open and uh, you can do things there as you need to. And you can of course use uh, the spell checking. Uh, with it. Uh, yeah. You can show there's a spell checking thing and then you can here yeah, find next and you can do your spell checking and grammar shedding and, and yeah, bigger language. Well, if you need more in that direction, let me know. But so far it seems to work nice. And uh, it's not using a web viewer like other people. <laughs> and is there a way of applying CSS to in a global way to all the contents of HTML text in text fields. Because for instance, we now have an add-on which is an HTML editor, but if you want to put CSS to the H2 heading, for instance, and then globally in all the records and all the, is that possible to do that somehow? Well, it depends on, on which editor you have. Uh, let's let's take here the tiny MCE. So we have our, editor defined in JavaScript. And somewhere here in this JavaScript is of course the definition of, of the skins and of the CSS. Oh. And you could of course uh, change this to whatever you like. Um, let me just look here for, um, where's the, that's a tiny MC actually. Uh, well, there's a lot of stuff here inside, but uh, somewhere in the, in the, well, this is also minimized. Uh, okay, you should look for the, for the original, but somewhere here you find, uh, oh, and the formats are missing for some reason, um, but here. So um, you could change any text you see here. You could change the, the how, how things look like. By, by just changing the right thing here. So let's see. Um, 
So let's just take inspect element and say, I want something changed like this is bold text. Um, oh, there's a custom menu, okay. But if I look on this text block, I can see what uh, style text is used. So it uses strong in this case. Mm. Oh, yeah. So you may define some uh, CSS, which looks for maybe MCE content body, and then inside looks for P, and then gives it a certain style. Or you could just change the styles of the interface itself by uh, changing the JavaScript here. Like this is MCE container, it has a certain color. Well, anyway, you can change the JavaScript and you can change the, you don't need to use the minimize version, uh, which is for saving disk space, of course. Um, yeah, you can use the full version. Yeah, and also may run his mermaid code right in, <laughs> in a web viewer and, and find it. Yeah. 